developers now building applications, they're building cloud native applications, microservices based applications, API based applications, mobile first applications, and using containers, microservices, etc. And so that is where we want them to understand how our Oracle Cloud platform is open, modern, and easy. Open in them being able to choose what programming language they can use. They can use Java EE for sure, but Java SE, PHP, Ruby, JavaScript, obviously. They can use any database. Uh, they definitely have the ability to use the Oracle database, but also being able to use MySQL, NoSQL, Cassandra, and other databases. And then being able to choose the uh, whether they run on bare metal, on infrastructure service, they're using Docker or VMs. So giving them a lot of choice and enabling them to build those modern uh, API first, mobile first, uh, uh, cloud native applications. And finally, making it very easy for them to get the applications out very quickly with a CI CD pipeline and enable high quality of release as they're doing these releases into production. Yes, yeah, so Franco, talking about our app dev portfolio, as I said, we're providing the Java cloud service, which gives you the ability to write J2EE applications, scale those applications, backed up, patched, managed, all of that done by Oracle. But if you wanted to write your applications with uh, other languages, then we're providing you the application container cloud service, where we're providing the Docker containers under the covers, and you can bring your JavaScript code, your Ruby code, your PHP code, and we'll automatically scale your application, scale your containers as needed based on volume, or you could set the policy for that. In addition to that, we're working on Oracle Functions so that we can get you serverless computing, and also from a mobile perspective, because most of the applications you're building are mobile-centric, we're allowing you to build your front end using any framework. So you could use Angular or Ionic, which are JavaScript frameworks. We're also providing Jet, which is a, a, a JavaScript framework from Oracle that is adding some enterprise-grade capabilities such as accessibility, internationalization, et cetera, into this open source JavaScript framework. But the main thing we focused in on is how developers can build rich mobile applications on the back end. So being able to do integrations really easily with back end applications, we've added analytics so you can get insight into how developer, how your user is actually using your applications. You can also get insight into location. So instead of just giving you latitude and longitude, we'd actually being able to say this user is in terminal four by door number 10, for example. And then finally, we're building a chatbot platform that gives you the ability to build chatbots, which is the new interaction paradigm on Facebook Messenger, on WhatsApp, WeChat, etc., where you don't have to worry about the how to make it work across platforms. And we're making sure that the natural language processing, the intent capabilities, etc., are all delivered for you. So that gives you the ability to build the backend services. Then on the front end side of it, we're giving you the ability to build uh, low code applications. So even business users can build applications using, for example, SaaS APIs, Oracle SaaS APIs, or third party APIs, where they can just drag and drop and build an application where they can extend objects within the SaaS uh, uh, application and easily expose it to other business users. We're also giving them the mobile accelerator toolkit, which enables the business user to be able to build a rich mobile application without needing to write any code and have it be very rich, be very responsive, run natively on the devices. So that's giving them low code capabilities. Yeah, now when developers want to release fast because the line of businesses are asking them to get more and, capa more and more capability out faster, they have to have a continuous delivery pipeline where they can check in code, immediately gets it checked into Git, um, they can do continuous integration with Hudson, or if they want, they can use webhooks and bring in Jenkins, you know, if that's the tool that they were using. And then they want to be able to use Chef and Puppet for scripting to get the code from uh, QA dev into staging or production. So we're enabling all of that with our continuous delivery, uh, uh, the, the developer cloud service that gives you continuous delivery out of the box, gives you the ability to manage scrums, to do uh, code reviews, etc. Then on top of that, we're giving you the container cloud service. So in case you wanted to bring your raw Docker containers, you don't have to worry about the orchestration of the containers. We're giving you a container service where you can bring your containers, you can aggregate those containers into an application and manage it as an application. 
And then one of the most important things in DevOps is to be able to give developers visibility into what's happening in production, to be able to address problems ahead of time so that they can reduce the mean time to repair and increase the mean time between failures. So for that, we've got the Application Performance Management Cloud Service, where developers don't need to install any software or manage any uh, management software other than dropping in an agent. And now they're able to get insight into user experience, into web app database performance information, and log analytics, all aggregated together into one data store. So now you can do analytics and get insight across all these different types of information about how your application is doing. And then we've got the Event Hub Cloud Service that gives you Kafka as a managed service available. So you, you can publish your events, you don't have to install Kafka, manage Kafka, scale Kafka, et cetera. We're taking care of that for you. And then finally, as you're building these API-first applications, you have to be able to expose these applications in an API catalog, be able to validate these APIs, authenticate these APIs, version these APIs, and have a developer portal exposed so that others can actually consume those APIs. And so we're giving you an API platform to be able to do that and be able to manage the entire life cycle of your APIs. And finally, developers need ways to be able to do SSO or multi-factor authentication. So giving them the identity cloud service so they can have security built into your application. And finally, as I mentioned, giving choice of databases. So obviously you have the ability to use the Oracle database, you can set up clusters, you can have Rack, you can have Active Data Guard, all of those superior capabilities of the Oracle database available to you as a service. So you don't have to install, manage, configure the database. But if you wanted, MySQL is also delivered as a service where clustered MySQL servers with support with backing patchup is all included and then giving you NoSQL as a service and Big Data as a service where Hadoop clusters are set up for you. We scale up the Hadoop cluster based on need for storage or need for uh, uh, compute, etc. And then integration is very important for developers because most of the applications that they're writing integrate to some back office applications. So making it very easy for developers to connect with SaaS applications, on-prem applications, or SOAP REST based interfaces. And finally, obviously, giving you a very uh, a rich IaaS platform where you have compute, storage, and network. And with compute, we're giving you really high performance compute where we've actually moved the virtualization off the box itself so that you are not hit with the performance impact of a hypervisor and giving you SSDs with N uh, NVMe SSDs so you have really high performance I.O. So now you can write screaming, performing applications running in the cloud uh, with bare metal capabilities or using VMs or using containers, any shape of compute that you want, and you can run open source content on there. So if you wanted to use Bitnami images that you want to run on there, or you want to be using, for example, MongoDB, which might not be a database that we're delivering as a service, you can run that non-Oracle content, open source content, also in the Oracle public cloud, on the Oracle cloud platform.